Welcome to the Feisties. Welcome to the Feisties. News for women. Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 7th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Sophia Hyung Kyun and labor activist Wan Jinbing were arrested in China on September 19th and are now facing trial. Their families say they have been detained for inciting subversion of state power. Sophia is a journalist who has been involved in several Me Too campaigns to provide support and assistance to victims of sexual assault and harassment. She was previously detained in October 2019 for nearly a year and charged with picking quarrels and provoking trouble after writing about the mass protests in Hong Kong. Labor activist Wan Jinbing, also known as Pancake, has provided legal support for people with disabilities and workers with occupational diseases. He is also a prominent supporter of the Me Too movement in China. Since their arrest, both activists have been prevented from choosing a lawyer or seeing family members, and their friends have had their homes searched and devices confiscated by the police. The two activists are expected to face trial soon for their crimes. Do you understand? The Chinese government is detaining social justice activists for speaking out about injustices. If that is not a violation of human rights, I don't know what is. Sadly, there's nothing we can do about it except continue to speak out. Sometimes speaking out seems like it isn't enough, but if it's all we can do, if it's all you can do, raise your voice. Those of us with the freedom to speak out must speak out and share the news to let everyone know this isn't right. The more we speak out, the more abusive authority figures know we see them. And eventually a leader of the pack will rise up and take action to stop it. If all you can do is speak out, then speak out to summon your leaders. In other news, conservative Disney fans are angrily boycotting Disney after leaders of Disney expressed opposition to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' education bill that prohibits discussion of sexuality and gender identity, also known as the Don't Say Gay Bill. Vocal boycotters are angry about Disney including a same-sex kiss in the New Lightyear movie and adding racism warnings on children's classics such as Peter Pan and the Jungle Book. Disney's opposition to the bill restricting discussion about gender and sexuality has prompted social media users to call Disney's stance Woke Disney, and they are angry about Disney waking up. General Entertainment President Carrie Burke does not care and has said that he believes Disney must do more to be more inclusive. Disney being woke is not about forcing opinions into children's minds. It's about creating a space for positive self-reflection that influences us from early childhood. Why is it important to be inclusive? When we grow up and are not exposed to media of people who believe and behave in a manner that reflects who we are, we compare ourselves and internally believe that something's wrong with us. We hide who we are and project that anger that we've had to hide onto others in abusive ways. When we feel free to express love in a way that feels natural to us, with consent and without hurting others, we are free to be more loving in this world. When Disney calls out racism, we stop internalizing those hurtful subconscious beliefs and are free to choose how we want to behave in this world. Woke Disney is really just giving us more ways to show love and be loved in return. In other news, Oklahoma lawmakers passed a bill that will make performing an abortion a felony punishable by 10 years in prison and a $100,000 fine. The bill is being sent to Republican Governor Kevin Stitt, who has promised to sign all anti-abortion legislation. If Oklahoma's bill passes into law, it will take effect this summer. Oklahoma's bill is just one of many Republican bills that severely restrict or ban abortion. As countries like Colombia move forward with decriminalizing access to abortion, many U.S. states are rushing to create legislation to limit it 
before a widely anticipated Supreme Court case that could overturn 50 years of established protections for abortion rights. Hey, patriarchy, why the rush to take control over a woman's right to choose? Maybe you can sense you're losing your grip on our society. Here's a spoiler, you lose. I promise that. It's time for a break. Should we blame Jada for Will Smith's attack on Chris Rock? Why would a woman call herself a slut? Answer to these questions and more right after the break. Don't miss it. My name is Shivangani and I am the CEO and founder of Feather and Bone. Feather and Bone is a skincare company for mama and baby. Our products only have three pure, safe and gentle ingredients straight from Mother Earth. Our formulations are inspired by Indian Ayurvedic traditions. My journey started when I was 12 years old after I had a terrible reaction to a store-bought face wash. I really struggled to find something clean and pure for my face. I experienced something similar during my pregnancy and also when I was trying to find clean, pure and safe products for my son. Unable to find something, I created my own line and it did super well. In fact, our face wash is the first ever face wash tablet that has won Best Cleanser a few times. It is my mission to help other mums to make life easy. And so if you're looking for safe, pure, natural ingredient products that are straight from the first mother herself, Mother Earth, then Feather and Bone products are for you. I want to help all of us feel skin confident. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Immediately following the 2022 Oscars slap heard around the world, absolutely no one listened to Will Smith's director to keep his wife's name out their <laughs> mouth. Everybody and their mama weighed in on whether Will Smith was wrong for slapping Chris Rock after he made a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. And the back and forth commentary dominated the internet for days as everyone tried to make sense of what happened and debated whether it was real or staged for ratings. A little more than a week later, the woman at the center of the controversy has yet to make a direct statement, which leaves gossip publications to create a statement for her. U.S. Weekly reported that a source told them that Jada Pinkett Smith wishes Will Smith didn't slap Chris Rock at the Oscars. I'm not a woman who needs protecting. Social media went wild after seeing this headline, with many blaming Jada for the assault, saying she could have stopped Will Smith and that her facial expressions are what caused him to strike 57-year-old comedian Chris Rock. First of all, have you considered that Jada never said that? Jada has a whole talk show. If she wanted to make a statement about how she felt about the incident, the smart move would be to do it on her own talk show. The anonymous source that gave U.S. Weekly the quote is probably a lie. Gossip sites like U.S. Weekly are itching for clicks and mentions, and this salacious headline gave them more than they could ever ask for. Just because a popular gossip site writes it doesn't make it true. When Jada is ready to speak, she will. And if she's smart, she won't be doing it on anyone's media platform but her own. Second of all, if you blame Jada's facial expressions for Will Smith's actions, then you're probably one of those people who believe that men abuse women because they deserve it. Will is a grown man who is in charge of his actions. Jada did not add him on or even speak to him to dictate what he did. He chose his actions for himself. If she had expressed the same facial expressions and he had slapped her, would you then say she caused it to happen? Every person is responsible for their reactions, whether it's rational or not. He can't blame her for what he did and neither should you. But you know what? If you wanna place the blame on Jada for Will's actions, go right ahead. Throw your opinion out there like everyone else. It's your party. One thing I realize is, People have to talk about you when they can't talk directly to you. Jada has the right to express a negative reaction to anything that displeases her. I love how Jada lives her life boldly according to her preferences. And it doesn't matter if you agree with what she chooses as long as her husband, Will, is okay with it. Will is not a victim in their relationship. 
Jada is not in the background pulling his strings. Stop trying to demonize Jada for living her life on her own terms and having a husband who supports her in every way he feels he should. That's her blessing. Don't hate on her because of it. In other news, we're living the feisty life and sometimes we have to break the rules to do so. In this edition of The Feisty Life, let's meet a woman who's turned a negative stereotype for women into a label she wears proudly. Hey, Wit, we know you're feisty, but tell us what else you are. Hi there, my name is Mysterious Wit, and I am a slut. Let's get this straight. I only call myself a slut because there are two ways that a woman can define herself in this society. She can be a good girl or a bad girl. And if I'm gonna be anything, then I'm gonna enjoy my sexuality. I'm gonna be a slut. Today I am an unapologetic slut, but I wasn't always that way. There was a time when I was a good girl. So what's a good girl? Well, for me, it's a young woman or a woman who does everything that society tells her to do so people won't think badly of her and so she can continue to have friends and believe that men are respecting her. That's because if she explores her sexuality or has sex in a way that is not socially ordained, she will be a bad girl or a slut. Let's look back about what kind of person I was when I was a good girl. I could not achieve an orgasm. I was racked with shame all the time. I was feeling guilty. I was letting men define me um, sexually and personally. I was very much suffering for being a good girl. Everything changed for me when I became a dominatrix, a professional dominatrix. I started exploring my sexuality on my own terms. I really embraced being a slut, but I wasn't all the way there yet. There was still a lot of learning I had to do. I still had a great deal of internalized shame. Namely, I was still so worried about being rejected by men. So I would play these games, making sure that I had a commitment with a guy before I went to bed with him. And if we had sex without you know, him calling me the next day, I would feel terrible about myself. I would feel used and I was very unhappy. Finally, I got married and that lasted for about 10 years and it was only when I got my divorce that I was really able to explore my slut -dom. Something had changed with my divorce. Maybe it was that I was 40 years old and I was experiencing my sexual peak, but I think it was that I was no longer looking for a serious relationship. I had already been married. I had seen what that was like. I didn't want to find a good dad to settle down with to have children. I had kids. And so I was finally able just to go out and explore my body and experience pleasure without caring what men thought about me, whether or not they wanted to date me, whether or not they had you know, any serious feelings about me. And I was finally able to just explore my sexuality and enjoy my goddess given right to pleasure. This doesn't mean that every experience was great. Um, some of my lovers were selfish. Um, some of them slut shamed me. Some of my friends slut shamed me. Um, I had to keep my life a secret from my family. I had to keep my life a secret from everyone. And so it was difficult being a slut, but it was completely worth it. I am glad that I have explored my sexuality and broken through all my internalized shame. Um, I am a slut and, and, and I'm proud of it. Thank you, Mysterious Weird, for being feisty and free. If I had some time to be a slut, I would be too. <laughs> we salute you. Oh, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty News for Women. <laughs>